I film oh my goodness I cannot talk I have filmed this intro a few times already and I can't seem to get it right for whatever reason so here we go again hello everybody it's Delilah and welcome back to my channel today I'm going to be sharing with you my week 35 and 36 pregnancy update I am finally in the last month of pregnancy and I couldn't be more excited to meet this little baby lots of things have been going on in the last couple weeks so I've got lots to talk about so I'm just going to jump right into this the first thing I want to talk about is our doctor appointment we had our doctor appointment about three or four days ago and it was my very first pelvic exam which I was quite nervous about but it actually went a lot better than I had anticipated. It wasn't very uncomfortable or anything like that. I also got tested for strep B, which I believe we'll be finding out the results next week when we have our next doctor appointment. But anyways, the pelvic exam went super well and my doctor said that I am already one fingertip sized dilated, which I thought was pretty crazy. I didn't think that was, I wasn't expecting to hear that. And she also said that baby is really low, which also really surprised me because I cannot feel it. Like, I was so sure I'd be able to feel when baby dropped, but I don't feel any different whatsoever. So I guess baby has moved down quite low, which is awesome. And my doctor also said that I am very, well in her words, she said very soft, which I'm pretty sure that means effaced, I think. I'm not sure, but she said because of that, she thinks the baby might come early which I am very okay with. I am so, so excited to meet this little baby. But all those things that she said totally shocked me. I did not think that I was, you know, moving along at all whatsoever because I don't really feel any changes like that. Like, I thought I would be able to feel things like that, but no, I suppose I can. Things are starting to slowly progress into the labor stage. As for weight gain, I have only gained half a pound again in the last two weeks, which is a total of one pound in the last month, which really surprised me because I thought that in the, like the last part of pregnancy is when people generally gain the most weight. So that surprised me, but my doctor hasn't said anything about it, so I suppose it's perfectly normal. That is a total of 17 pounds gained so far which I believe is also healthy and normal, so that is also all good. The biggest thing that I have been dealing with in the last, well especially the last week, is shortness of breath. And I did talk about this in my last pregnancy update, I had already been experiencing it then, but it's definitely starting to get a lot worse. This is why I kind of thought that baby was still quite high because baby is just really pushing on like my diaphragm. It's just really difficult to breathe. So I thought that once baby dropped, I'd be able to breathe easier, but that is not the case for me. I suppose I just have a really short torso, which is probably why I'm still feeling very short of breath even though baby is very low. Some days are really, really hard. Like, even if I'm not doing anything, it's really difficult to breathe and I have to really think about breathing in order to like feel like I'm getting enough air, if that makes any sense. Again, like I said in the last video, it's a very panicky feeling sometimes. And I'm starting to feel it right now too because I'm talking and I'm not taking deep breaths constantly, so I have to learn to take deep breaths more often, take it easy, I cannot move around too fast or do anything too strenuous, even talking now is, is making me a little bit out of breath, so I just am really trying to take it easy, but yet at the same time I want to be able to get up and move around and do things because I'm still capable of it, I just have to take it a little bit slower. The next thing I have been experiencing a lot more frequently lately is lightning crotch. At least I'm pretty sure that's what it is. It sounds pretty much exactly what people have been describing, so I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Um, basically it's just really random sharp shooting pains down there just out of the blue for like a few seconds and then they're gone. But they are very sharp, very strong pains. I have found that I get them mostly at night. I do get them during the day as well, but at night it seems to be a little bit more frequent. Along with frequency of lightning crotch is frequency of having to use the bathroom. I have to pee all 
the time. And it's not so bad during the day, but at night, I am having to go to the washroom like four or five times a night now, which is really <laughs> inconvenient. This only started happening a few days ago. The last while I've had to pee a lot more frequently, but now it's really starting to pick up. It's like my body is soaking up all the water that I'm drinking throughout the day and then at night is when it decides that it needs to release all this water or at least that's what it feels like because I'm not really going that often during the day, like not more than usual, but at night all of a sudden now I just have to go constantly. Something else that I'm pretty sure I mentioned in the last few updates is a sore back and sore hips. It's not a constant ache. I find that if I'm sitting in a position for too long or standing, laying down or anything, any position for too long, my lower back and sometimes my hips will get really, really sore. And then it's really uncomfortable for the next while and it takes a long time to actually go away. So I have to constantly be switching positions. So during the day I am often in between sitting and standing constantly, which is fine. Like I usually find that it's okay during the day. As long as like in the evenings, as long as I'm still getting up every once in a while, then I'm fine. But at night, I do find it's a bit more of a struggle because, I mean, there's only two positions that I can lay in and so I'm constantly flipping back and forth and especially if I do end up falling asleep for you know, a long period of time, I'll wake up and my back will be really sore, so it's not the worst thing, like as long as I'm moving around, I'm totally fine, but that has definitely been getting a lot worse in the last couple of weeks. Something else I've also been noticing more frequently is heartburn. Now I haven't talked about this at all in my pregnancy updates, but I have noticed heartburn a few times throughout this pregnancy, but it has definitely gotten a lot more frequent recently. Basically it just feels like there's a, like a fireball of acidity in my throat and it's really uncomfortable and painful almost to breathe. It happens mostly at night when I'm laying down or if I have eaten a, like a very big meal, my stomach is very full, that is when it gets really bad and especially if I lay down after that, then it's really really bad. So it's not constant and it's not every day, but it does happen if I eat too much or sometimes just when I'm laying down for no reason at all, it seems to happen. So it's just something else that I have been dealing with lately. The last thing that I wanted to talk about is pregnancy insomnia. Now, I wasn't really sure if I should be mentioning this or talking about this because it's not like I'm not getting enough sleep. I do think I am getting enough sleep for sure. Sleeping has been quite difficult and hard for me lately. I am extremely thankful that I am on maternity leave and that I do have the option of sleeping in in the morning because I am up on average three to five hours a night just awake. Usually it's from like two till six at night. I cannot sleep and I'm pretty sure it has to do with all these symptoms that I've been talking about in this video, like the shortness of breath sometimes bothers me, um, heartburn, constantly having to flip sides when I'm sleeping, that wakes me up quite often and makes it difficult to fall back asleep, having to get up to use the bathroom, that is a big one. Also, I get quite hungry in the middle of the night. I mean, I'm awake for, you know, three to five hours. Of course I'm gonna get hungry. So there's that as well. I always have to have snacks by my bed because I have to eat in the middle of the night. And then, you know, every once in a while there's that lightning crotch that happens. And then like all of these things just sort of combine. Plus my mind doesn't want to stop thinking. My mind doesn't stop playing scenarios in my head of what delivery day is gonna be like or what labor is going to be like and I just I just cannot stop thinking and then I'm having all of these physical symptoms and it just makes it quite difficult to sleep. Now that being said, I am able to sleep for a few hours usually from like 10 until 2 and then in the morning again for another couple of hours from like 
6 until 8 or 9, so I am getting at least enough sleep. I don't feel like I'm tired all the time, which is really great. So as long as I'm not feeling super tired, I'm okay with it. I guess my body might also be preparing myself for when baby is here and when I do have to be awake in the middle of the night to feed and all of that fun stuff. So I don't know, I think it might be my body just sort of preparing and plus all the symptoms and all that kind of stuff, it all just kind of adds up and makes it quite difficult to sleep. Also, I just wanted to mention, because I'm so excited about it, that the last final touches are starting to happen in our nursery, and I'm getting so excited about it. I've got like lots of little decorations going up in there. We're just waiting on a few more things, and it should be pretty much all put together. So I'm hoping to do a nursery tour shortly after baby comes. But yes, I am so extremely excited about it, and and as you can see, we have a little Moses basket in the back there, which is going to be where baby will sleep for the first probably three months or so. I'm not sure we're going to feel it out, but I moved that out of the baby room because we're finally starting to complete the baby room, so I didn't want it in there anymore. It is sitting back there and it is going to be used very soon. At this point, I'm going to show you the belly shot for week 36. I don't think I have any stretch marks. I mean, I haven't looked at my belly closely quite recently, but I don't think I have stretch marks yet, but I do have some discoloration around my belly button. It's probably just because it was once pierced. I don't know, I feel like that is kind of contributing to the discoloration. My belly isn't itchy or anything, which I'm very thankful for because around week, what was it, like 22, I was going through some like extreme itching rashes and it was horrible. So I'm very thankful that my belly isn't itchy or anything like that. And yeah, I feel like I have a whole lot of little things that I want to talk about like um, emotionally preparing myself for labor and delivery and like my fears and concerns and things like that but I won't add that into this video but I thought it would be kind of a fun idea if you guys wanted to ask me questions about you know my birth plan or my fears my anxieties and like even things that aren't you know baby or birth related feel free to ask questions down below and I will answer them in a Q&A video. So if you guys have any questions, anything at all that you're curious about, wanting to know more about me or whatever, um, just comment them down below and, and if I get enough questions, I will do a Q&A video. But I believe that is everything for this update. If you guys want to follow me on social media, I will leave my Instagram link down below. Uh, when baby comes, I will be posting lots and lots of photos and that is where I will be first announcing baby's birth. So if you want to follow that, then I would recommend following my Instagram. And I hope you guys are having a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!